You're listening to Tech Talk with Mark Saltzman on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Welcome back. Tech Talk is brought to you by Intel. Join the conversation at facebook.com slash Intel Canada. Well, most of us take photos, whether it's on our smartphone, a compact point-and-shoot camera, or one of those bigger and pricier interchangeable lens cameras, including SLRs, or single-lens reflex models, you know, the ones worn around uh, someone's neck on a lanyard. Well, regardless of what kind of uh, camera you use or other product like a phone to capture memories, chances are are pretty good that um, you can use a plain English primer to improve your shots. So I'm very pleased to have this next guest join us until the bottom of the hour. Jason Thompson is a renowned photographer who runs the blog and Facebook site Frame One Photo. Hey, uh, Jason, thanks for your time. Hey, Mark, thanks for having me on. Well, spring is almost here, so I thought it would be a perfect time to pick your massive brain about how we can take better photos and videos as the weather warms. But first, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you do? Well, I, uh, I have decided to pick up a camera about 10 years ago when I had the first of my six kids. I just thought it might save me money over time if I just, you know, did my own photography at home instead of paying for school photos every year and might be a little bit more interesting. And over time what happened was not only did I fall in love with photography and buy way too much equipment, but I started talking to my mom. And I wanted to make my mom a better photographer. And, of course, she doesn't have the time to listen to all of that professional advice and go on to all the uh, the blogs and the Internet. So what I did was I went out and I created this concept of frame one photo, which is, you know, Here's how you can make better photography, photographs in, in just a week or just a, a 10 minutes in a week, which is fantastic. And literally, I made it for my mom, and she does take better photos now. And now I'm allowed, to, uh, with her blessing, to go out and, and take that advice and give it to other people. Did you say six kids? I have six <laughs> Kids, I blog about good, them too. Good for you, man. Oh my gosh. And you had time to join us here for 20 minutes to talk. <laughs> I don't even know how you do that. Well, thank you again, Jason. Um, the Facebook site, by the way, for Frame One Photo, where you can get a lot of these tips, uh, would be facebook.com slash frame one photo. So that's frame O N E photo. And yes, Jason, you know, what you do and what I try to do with Tech Talk and, and all my articles and, and blogs is to make sense of technology. So there's that commonality there. I love that you are, uh, are doing this for people. And I agree with you that if you ask the average person on the street, would you like to take better photos? They'd say yes, but A, they will feel that they're not technically savvy enough to uh, master that craft. Nor, or the second thing is that they will say, I don't have the time. You know, I don't have time to go to school for this. So I love how your, your advice is all in plain English and can help you. You take better photos regardless of what you're using. Again, a lot of people say to me, "Well, I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on an SLR, so how, am I ex- how do you ex- how do I expect to take good photos with my little point and shoot or my smartphone?" But you can. A lot of it is not the device itself, but the person taking the, the picture. I would absolutely agree with that. You know, the old line is, "The best camera is the one that you have with you." And of course. Most of us have our our mobile or our cell phones with us these days, and we're trying to take pictures. And really, if you learn a couple of basic principles, then you can be taking fantastic photos no matter what you've got in your hands. So let's uh, let's start on that note. Then uh, let's talk about some of these uh, these tips that you can impart on our listeners to take better pictures of their kids, their grandkids, their pets, or nature photography. Um, let's go with your first one. You um, you say that you should you should abolish automatic mode. Tell us about that. Right. So the, the first thing that I'd like to tell people is I can tell you just five or six things that will make you a better photographer in just ten minutes, and that first one really applies to a point-and-shoot cameras. You know, if you look at your point-and-shoot cameras, you have different modes. You have auto, you might have portrait mode. I've even seen aquarium mode. These modes are a bit of a scam because they let the camera do all the thinking for you. And often, when the camera does the thinking, it doesn't do it right. You know, if you're in a nice, quiet restaurant with some friends having some dinner, you want to be able to make the right decisions when it comes to that photograph. And so, I tell people, get away from the auto setting and move towards the letter settings that are on your camera. And those settings are P for program, AV for aperture priority, TV for shutter priority, or on some cameras like Nikon's, it's S for shutter priority, and M for manual. 
And the thing is with all of those letters is they sound scary, but the, the, the thing with photography these days is it's not nearly as frightening as it was once before. You can literally open your manual and in five minutes learn these four settings and get out there and make better photographs almost instantly just by changing the dial. But there are some, uh, I think some camera companies call it a scene assist mode, where if you're, you know, in a, um, let's say it's nighttime. So if you change the dial to that, then uh, if, if there's an option for that, um, then it knows how to adjust the focus and the lighting according to the situation. But increasingly, we're finding cameras uh, will assess the scene itself. There's, there's some sort of technology there that will look at your condition that you're in and then apply those. So you're saying don't even bother, just, just stick to manual. Yes, and, and the reason is because those settings and, are, are great, but they don't really, you don't really understand what's happening with the camera. If you take these, these four simple settings, your mind will think, well, I'm inside right now, it's kind of dark, I need to change this setting or that setting under the manual or the AV or the TV or, or increasingly the P setting, and I can take control. I can make the photograph look the way that I want the photograph. I have used some of those scene assists, and I use them more frequently on mobile phones because mobile phones don't typically come with those manual settings. I think right. Android phones more than iPhone or even the Windows phone platform. But I find that I'll use those settings in those situations. But if I want to take a really great picture, let's say I'm out um, at a birthday party and I want to take a picture of everybody, rather than just turn it to the portrait setting, I take a look at what's around me and I think, okay, I want the photo to look like this, and to get the photo to look like this, I really only have to do these three things. And, you know, by taking the time to learn a little bit about the, the, the three magic things on a camera to get more light in, which are shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, by taking the time to learn those things, and it really only takes a minute or two, I can make that photo look exactly the way I want. We're chatting with Jason Thompson, a renowned photographer who runs the Facebook site, Face, sorry, Frame One Photo, facebook.com slash frame one photo. Jason, you've often said the number one way, the number one way to make your photos look better is to get closer, either by zooming in or physically walking closer towards that subject. Why does that make for a better photo? <laughs> you know, the number one thing that I saw my mom do when I started this blog was leave miles of headroom around the pictures of her grandkids. So you got your grandkids, but you have a beautiful picture of a parking lot that's sitting behind them. Mm-hmm. If you move closer, if you zoom in a little bit and, and get really tight around them or even crop part of the face off in the shot, you've got less distractions in the background, give more power to the image in the foreground, and ultimately it immediately makes your friend look at your mobile phone or the back of your point-and-shoot camera and say, wow, that is a great-looking picture, only because you got a little bit or a lot bit closer. Just for a recap, for those who are shopping for a camera and they see a, an optical zoom setting or a digital zoom setting, please remind our listeners why the digital zoom number isn't important. Right. It's really uh, key when you take a look at the features of a camera to take a look, first of all, for that optical zoom setting. That is, when you push the lever or push the button on your camera, it physically zooms the lens so you can get closer to a shot. Digital, it, digital zoom is a software trick. It's something you can actually do at home. So when you take that picture and you use the digital zoom, it's using the software in the camera to zoom in. And oftentimes you can get noisy or pixely pictures out of that. Mm-hmm. You don't need the digital zoom. In fact, I recommend that you turn that setting off immediately. It's the first setting you should turn off your camera because you can get a little bit closer using your software on your computer and to do a better job with that software. But smartphones don't have optical zoom. They only have digital zoom. So that's one of the drawbacks to taking a picture on your smartphone. Even though the megapixels are getting more and more, you know, the Samsung that was just unveiled, the Galaxy S4 is a 13 megapixel camera. Very impressive number of little dots that make up the image, but you need to physically get closer to the subject with digital cameras. Absolutely. When it comes to to mobile phones, I say use your feet. You know, (laughs) a lot of times using that, that pinch to zoom setting on a mobile phone the stuff will look fantastic. 
on your phone. But as soon as you get it a little bit larger, taking a look at it on a computer or a television, you'll see it, it, it's blurry. It's a little bit shaky. That's the one, I think, one downfall of mobile phone cameras overall. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many megapixels it has. It's about sharpness and the sharpness of the lens. And the sharpness of a lens on a mobile phone is okay, but it can't compete with a good point-and-shoot lens or a really good DSLR lens. All right. Now, listen, when we return, more with Jason Thompson from Frame One Photo on taking better photos, whether you're a newbie or a seasoned shutterbug or perhaps somewhere in between. But first, let's check in to see how the roads are doing with the CJD 800 Traffic Center. Canada's top tech expert turns geek speak to street speak. Tech Talk with Mark Saltzman on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. You might not think you have the technical savoir-faire, if you will, to take better photos. Um, but uh, guess what? You don't need a degree in photography or a diploma or, you know, to, to get more out of your camera, your smartphone. When you've, got a folk, uh, when you've got a guy like Jason Thompson on the line, he's uh, one of those guys who can break down the geek speak into street speak with his Facebook site, Frame One Photo. That's at facebook.com slash frame O-N-E photo, and uh, he's joining us on the line to talk about some simple tips to taking better shots. Thanks uh, again for joining us, Jason. Thanks, Mark. One thing we're, many of us are guilty of when we're taking a photo of someone is putting them smack dab in the center of the picture. Why, why is that not always the best idea? Well, after getting closer, I think one of the most important things that you can do with a photograph is to stop putting everything in the center, stop putting your kids in the center, Stop putting that mountain in the center. Whatever it is, you want to move it over to the left or right. And what, the way that I describe this to people when I, I teach them about photography is, remember the old show, The Brady Bunch? And the beginning of the show at The Brady Bunch, you saw all nine characters on the show at the beginning of the show. They were separated mm -hmm. in a grid. And that's really the way you need to think about a photograph is that nine squares in a grid. And this is really a classic artistic technique, but we don't need to get into the, uh, the mumbo-jumbo of rules of, of thirds and all that sort of stuff. Really what you need to know is anywhere you have one of those boxes where the lines intersect on that grid of nine, you want to put your subject there. So in that top left-hand corner or the bottom right-hand corner, because that's where the most powerful part of the image is will really appear. That's, that's in, in that artistic sense, makes people feel really excited and makes a photograph look so much more powerful. So if you're, you're taking a picture of your mom, mm -hmm. just move her over to the side of the frame, left or right, whatever you feel looks better. Take the picture then. You will be amazed at how strong the image looks. So don't always put them in the center like Alice is. Alice is always the one in the center in Brady Bunch, right? The, the housekeeper. Good memory. That's absolutely right. <laughs> I'm dating myself here. <laughs> but if you've got six kids, you're not so young either. <laughs> they call us the Brady Bunch, so there we are. <laughs> I bet. Right. There you go. You know yourself. Um, no wonder you use that analogy. I didn't even make that connection. Very good. All right, so that's a good tip. Another thing that many of us are guilty of is we reach for the flash right away. We think, oh, you know, my photos are going to be too dark, so I'm going to turn on the flash. But you, you don't, you're not a big fan of the flash. Well, it's funny you mention that. I'm a professional photographer as part of, of my day job, and, of course, I also do this teaching. And as a professional photographer, I own eight flashes, and I set them off all of the time. But, of course, that's a really advanced bit. Before I got good with my flash, I learned to understand that the flash is going to do terrible things to a lot of pictures, especially the flash on a mobile phone camera or on a point-and-shoot camera. And on both of those cameras that I own, I've turned the flash off. And the reason is is because that flash gives you one bit of light that shoves right at everything in the frame, and that light tends to uh, fry everything that's in the front of the frame. It just yeah. tends to be overexposed. overexposed. And a lot right. Of the back of the frame is dark. And so what I try and encourage people to do is to learn about ways that they can get more light into the camera without using the flash. And the, that, those three things, again, are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. And, again, they sound scary because they're acronyms and all that sort of stuff. But I write on frame one photo really simple infographics that show you, hey, shutter speed. That's really how long the shutter is open on a camera. 
and before and everything that it sees it'll record so here's how to take advantage of that and literally in two to three minutes you can understand how to use these things to your advantage as opposed to just drenching everything in that flashlight now that said there are instances where you're not going to have enough light and you can use the flash and i'll give you my one favorite tip to do that when you've got something like that i heard about somebody who was taking a picture of a, of a meal in a restaurant and they were showing off their flash and rather than just click and having the flash beam right at it, they deflected the flash. And what, that was, what they were doing was they took the, a plate and they had the flash fire at a white plate, and that white plate deflected off a second white plate to the left, and that white, second white plate was diffusing the flash. It was making it softer and bigger and more pleasing to the eye. So that's the one instance where I can see flash doing a great job by softening it up, by really bouncing it off a nearby surface like a plate or a ceiling, if you can do that with your camera. You, you can, can also nice picture. And you can also take advantage of your environment to, for, for lighting help, and lighting is so critical. So I always tell people, you know, if you're outside, make sure that if you're the one taking the photo that your back is to the sun, because otherwise your subjects will look like a, a silhouette. They'll they'll look like a black cutout. So make sure that even though they might be squinting a little bit, um, you know, make sure that you're, that they're not behind the sun. And similarly inside, if you're beside a window, you know, that's going to uh, also affect it. So just to look at your environment, see what light you can use, whether it's a natural one or an artificial one to your advantage, instead of using your own flash. Absolutely. I'm a big fan of natural light. Get people into the shade, look for cloudy days and use those big windows or screen doors in the back. They are fantastic for getting beautiful light and beautiful pictures. One of your tips to taking a better photo is to get a new perspective. And I, and I like this one because I've often written about this to give advice. And that is to, part of this tip is, is to make, it, make sure your, our photos are at eye level. Because if you, you know, so many parents um, tilt the camera down to take a picture of their kids. And then the perspective looks a bit funky like that doesn't look quite right um instead when you know when I, I we had a, a family here with a baby crawling on the floor last week and i got down on the floor and i put my um camera on the ground i was able to not only steady the shot uh it was kind of like a tripod but i was able to get right at his face level and it was just great it was just a great photo that's and i think that's great advice a lot of times you know you want to you want to try something that's original, make the photos not look like every other photo. And a big way to do that is, is to change that perspective. Yes, absolutely get down um, to a baby's level to, to see a baby. But there's other ways you can do that, too, that are really nifty, which are if you want to take pictures of flowers, instead of taking a picture straight on the flower, get over top of the flower, almost like you're a mini helicopter looking down on the flower. And, of course, here's one of my favorite ones. You know, I'm, uh, I'm getting on in years, and, and I've gained a couple of pounds, and I want to still look good in my photos. So get up a little bit higher, and that actually thins out the face really nicely, and it's an easy way to make everybody look beautiful and wonderful. Oh, I like that tip. That's a good one. I can use that myself. Or <laughs> I meant for whoever's taking my photo when I'm doing my next, uh, you know, that's a great one. Um, also, a lot of people don't know how to hold their camera properly. Uh, why don't you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, and this is, this is the number one tip that I, I love to, to leave people with. How many times have you been out uh, you know, I was at a concert last week, and everybody's at the concert, and they're one-handing it with the, uh, the camera up, way up high, trying to get that stage. And then they get home, and they wonder why the, the photo is all uh, blurry and streaky. And the reason is, is that, you know, when a camera is in a really dark setting, it's, it's trying to get as much light into it. And, of course, if you're not using your flash, you need to get that light into it. And one of the most important things is to hold that camera steady. And to hold your camera steady, you really need to turn yourself into something I like to call the human tripod. So instead of taking your cell phone when you're taking a camera and extending your hands straight out in front of you, pull them back. Pin your elbows into your belly or into your chest and be really, really tight. It actually lessens the amount of shake that's happening with the camera. And in a dark setting, that's really important because you'll get a a crisper image out of, out of that shot. So, again, just turn yourself into that human tripod by, by getting those elbows right into your body and holding that camera. In fact, the other thing is not only holding the camera, but if it's a point-and-shoot camera where you have a viewfinder that you can look through, get that right up to your face because actually your forehead works to stabilize the camera as well. It does a great job at that. I was just going to say that a photographer once taught me a tip with smartphone pictures is to put the camera right beside your, your like put it against your face on the left or right side. And uh, that steadies the shot as well. Um, you know, so your, your hands aren't shaking. Uh, you just press it 
uh, against your your head when you take the shot. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So it's thank really you very much. Thing. And there's a there's, sorry. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, no. Go ahead, Jason. We're going to wrap up in a moment. I was just going to say there, there's a famous photographer by the name of Joe McNally who has this crazy uh, way to hold the camera that he can take a picture that's a one second exposure and it looks perfectly crisp. So if you if you Google Joe McNally how to hold a camera, you'll find something amazing. <laughs> You'll also find something amazing at facebook.com slash frame one photo. Uh, you can join the other 2000 members who are part of frame one photo. We've been talking with Jason Thompson, a, uh, a renowned photographer, creative director, copywriter, and uh, speaker. Thank you very much for joining us, Jason. Thank you, Mark. We'll let you get back to your six kids. <laughs> and you can tell I can't get over that. But anyhow, and I thought I had my hands full with three kids. Um, again, Jason, uh, you know, if you uh, want to learn more about him, you can go to facebook.com slash frame one photo.